Where's the bell's done? He's sleeping. And then? And then I'll wake up. And then? I think I need to wake up the bell's done. He needs to have breakfast with us. All right. I'm waking him. No. No, I want to wake him up. You want to wake him up? loves to wake people up. Josh! Hi, Justin. It's 5 o'clock. Oh, boy. Justin? It's 5 o'clock. No, you can turn the light on right away. Let him have a minute to wake up. No! Okay, let's do a handshake. Can we do a handshake first? I need, I need. Okay. Okay. All right. Brendan, yeah. One more. I need a So many parents with kids with autism and other special needs are used to seeing their kids struggle and very frequently fail. Not here, though. Brandon is uh, eight years old. He was first diagnosed at the age of two. We knew that he was different. He does not make eye contact with people. He does not smile uh, at people. So that was uh, ex especially difficult for us to start changing our lifestyle to adjust to his behavior. Mommy watches your basketball and then mommy goes to lunch with you. I'm gonna take you to lunch, uh-huh. I can't go to class today. No class, what do you have instead of class? I don't know, basketball's first. My son Jason was diagnosed with autism at age two. Jason's development was nothing like my older son's. He did not play with toys like a typical baby. He was agitated a lot more easily. No! Nobody's going back to sleep. Nobody's going back to sleep with you, Jason. Like, ah! Jason has a lot of repetitive language. <laughs> he will say something and he perseverates on it. We have to try to shift the topic of conversation where he says it yes. repeatedly yes. over and over. Swim. 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 Okay, Jason, Jason, look. Go, go do your shots. Go do your shots. The difficulties of uh, raising Brendan uh, is communication, you know, and also understanding what's going through, you know, his mind. Because it's nonverbal, we are not able to, you know, understand what's affecting him. Okay. What do you want? Tell me, what do you want? I'm sorry. Hmm? It changes our view of life. So much of our time is now spent on working with Brandon, uh, teach him the basics of life. Clean up like this. Clean up. Finding the right programs for him. Sit. Mommy do the paddle oh, for here. you. Okay, Sit. mommy do the paddle. Okay, you play mommy do the paddle. Okay, turn on. Can and D. We noticed when we were at the swimming pool, when this music play on the speaker, some pop music, you know, he would respond to it by moving his hands. So at that point, we were trying to control his stim by finding a replacement uh, behavior. And that's how I decided to you know, get him a piano keyboard. Jason has always been musically inclined. Uh, from a young child, he would play with, you know, shakers, watch music videos on YouTube. He would be in my car wanting to hear music. So we were incredibly grateful that Lee came into our lives. We found Lee, and um, it just took off from there. Where's Lee? Coffee guy. Where's Lee? Yes. What do we say? Lee had to go. Home. And you'll see Lee. I don't see you. My name is Lee Stockner. I'm the creator of a program named Occupational Octaves Piano. 
A few years into working at my first school for students with autism, I noticed a number of matching systems that were functioning quite well for students. Students that were able to do things like cooking because they were able to match a red cup or a green cup and pour the proper amount of ingredients into a bowl and participate in something that without those adaptations, they would not be able to participate in. So when I'm looking at a note on a page, it's telling me which button to push on the piano, which finger to use to do it, and how long to hold that for. So instead of getting all of that information out of a set of symbols, lines, spaces, dots, numbers, I took the instructions and made them color-coded. So there will be a letter D labeled on the piano, and there will be, let's say, a green ring. When the student sees a green letter D, then the student will find the green ring, find the D on the piano, and push it down. Let's breathe together. Look at Lee, please. Look at me. Brandon first meet Lee in the first lesson. He just like, you know, meeting anyone for the first time, you know, no eye contact, didn't show any interest. Uh, but Lee, I think Lee really understood, you know, how to deal with a, a child like him. Uh, picked him up, play around with him, and really got comfortable uh, with Brandon. You want to touch the ceiling? Yes. Time to yeah. touch the yeah, Initially, we were we were hopeful that Lee would be able to uh, work successfully with Jason because again he had some behaviors with Lee. Um, he would scream. He would act out. Lee. Jordan, look what they had said. Lee. Jordan, look. Lee would really have to act not only as a music teacher, but as a behaviorist, you know, who really could focus on getting a special needs student to appropriately engage in the lesson. Over here we got... Hang. What? Red. Thank you. Green. Blue. Brand is very into letters and colors, so that was sort of uh, a uh, you know instant connection for Brandon, and he felt comfortable you know next to Lee. Uh, so step by step, you know, in the first lesson, we got him you know sitting uh, quietly on the keyboard, listening to Lee, and so by the end of the lesson, you know, we start playing on the keyboard. really were not quite sure if Jason could successfully play an instrument. We were concerned about him reading notes and the traditional learning music. And then when we met with Lee and we saw his approach, we were, uh, we were hopeful that it would work. And we saw from the beginning, he, he really did love it and take to it. I think that the piano has given him the ability to see something in himself that he otherwise wouldn't have realized. He really doesn't always know what to do with himself, and those times can be challenging. Knowing that he can always go to the piano when he comes home is really a wonderful thing for him, and it's something that will actually be an activity for him that he can do independently, without us you know, being on top of him, and that he enjoys. So. That means so much to us. I mean, it's, it's really incredible, right, to see Brendan being able to play these complex musical pieces. As a parent, I mean, there's no better feeling than watching your son jumping up and down in front of the applause of your family and friends, given that he doesn't really have much else, right, uh, that he can share with the people. And, uh, allow him to start sharing more and use music as a way to communicate and to express his feelings. I will back down.